Hey everybody, my name is Seth, and today we're going to be diving to Ray-E, specifically their phone app and cloud portal, and talk about some of their features such as flow and app control. So let's hop into the phone app. Now we're on the Ray-E phone app, and we're going to show you guys how to set up smart flow control. Now how you're going to do that is go into your workspace, go to advanced, and scroll down to see flow and app control. Now on the phone app, we do have an option for smart flow control, but if you're looking for some more advanced configurations to customize a little bit more options, you can do this in the web interface, which we'll talk about later. But let's first talk about what is smart flow control? Well, essentially it is a feature used to avoid congestion by optimizing user traffic. As a working principle, here's an example. When the total user traffic is low, then the maximum WAN bandwidth, the rate limit policy will not be applied. As an example, when we enable smart flow control and choose a WAN port and go ahead and limit the uplink and downlink to 100 megabits per second, this is now the maximum rate limit. Every user at this point, as long as it's below these limits, will get the required bandwidth that they need. However, when the total user traffic exceeds the maximum WAN bandwidth, the user-based rate limits will take effect. The total WAN bandwidth will be equally allocated for every user. For example, if there are 10 users on the network, the total user traffic is 200 megabits per second. And WAN bandwidth, the limit we have here is 100 megabits per second. So if each of them are requiring 200 megabits, what will happen to limit the congestion on the network and make it fair for everybody is every user will get 10 megabits of bandwidth allocated to them after enabling the smart flow control feature. But it will only go into effect once it crosses that threshold. If it's below, everybody will get the required amount. If it goes above, it'll be split equally amongst all users so they have enough equally. Like I said, if you want some more advanced configurations, we will have that on the web interface. Now let's talk about app control as well that we're in here. So same process, we just select app control now, and we can go down to where it says add, select a policy name. For example, we'll say YouTube. We can have this enabled, select a user, and we can select a certain VLAN or if you have set up any type of user groups or all users or anything like that. We'll just say specifically for any users on this VLAN here. And this is where we can actually select a certain app or website that the person cannot receive any access to. Now, why might you want to set up app control or website control? Well, in a business or in a certain setting, you may want to limit what websites for you know potential issues down the line that you may not want people to go on. Maybe it's a school district and you don't want them to going on any type of uh, YouTube or anything that can distract them in school or in a business. Maybe you want to limit this. So as an example, we can go down, select, you know, we'll just go to apps here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and type in YouTube at the top. And hit search. It's going ahead and found this for me and I can go ahead and select YouTube, hit okay. And policy type, you can block, you can even set a speed limit, or you can even select a priority. And you can do custom times as well. If you wanna do it on the weekend only, have this policy for the weekdays, for any given moment, all time, or even select a custom policy with a custom time period. Very easy to set up directly on the phone app. And like I said, you can enable this for a variety of different users as well. All right, now we're on the cloud portal. We're gonna go ahead and access the smart flow control by going over to the configuration menu and the network wide section and choose flow and app control. Then we're gonna go ahead and under the flow control section, select to configure. Now we have an option to use a template or uh, to configure this later. We're just gonna scroll down and we get access to configure all the uplink and downlink ports. Now we're just gonna go ahead and put one gigabyte for all of these. Now this function is the same as it does on the phone app with the same rule sets. But what we can do now is hit save at the bottom and we can get some information about each individual WAN port. But what we can do a little bit differently here is go to where it says custom traffic control policy. We can select add, 
And we can actually go ahead on this side and do IP traffic control by selecting an IP or a VLAN or a user group or add custom IP addresses. We're just gonna go ahead and put one in. We can select if there is some type of rate limit for this IP address or no rate limit rate limit settings as well per IP rate limit or for the overall rate limit choose maximum and enable or disable the status and even enter a policy name now similar on the phone app as well we can go to app slash website control select add go to the IP we can select a VLAN a user group or an individual IP address or even a custom IP address range Now we can also select an application. For example, we'll do say YouTube again for this one. Or we can even add more if we wanted to as well. We'll say Google. We can scroll down, have an effective time frame by going into custom, creating a description if we'd like a period of time on each day, a start and end time, and we can continuously add rows to get the perfect time we want. And the name of the policy as well. 